Hello, Metals 2 and 3 students. Um, what I'm going to be showing you in this video is just how to form your cylinder that you fuse together for your tavern mug um, so that it's nice and round. You can see that mine is this really awkward kind of oblong shape. So I'm just going to use my trusty blowhorn stake. Um, initially, just to round it out, I'm going to use a, a plastic mallet. Um, and then once it's pretty round, I'm going to use a planishing hammer to planish my seam. It's pretty smooth, but you can see that I have some bumps, so I wanna planish that out. I'm also gonna use my planishing hammer just all the way around to texture the pewter. And pewter picks up texture really, really easily. Um, if you have any of those texturing hammers, you know, that have uh, different kinds of patterns um, carved into the faces of your hammers. They work really well on these. I don't have one right now, um, so this is what I'm dealing with. You could always also make your own texturing hammer. If you have, say, like an old ball peen hammer around and you can just carve texture textures into the surface. All right, so I'm using my blowhorn stake. I'm gonna put it on like this because this is the top, so it's gonna be more narrow. The bottom is gonna be wider. So I'm just putting it right there and I'll just start hammering away. Now my cylinder is nice and round, and like I said, I'm gonna start planishing the seam and as well as the entire cylinder. Um, one thing just to note though, is even though you do wanna planish out these bumps, um, I don't wanna focus so much on the seam. One thing that I find I'm always having to correct is I place too much emphasis on planishing the seam out and not enough on the rest of the piece. And then I end up, if I'm looking at my piece from the top, you can see that the part where the seam is is kind of flat. It's not the end of the world, I can keep forming it, but that's why even though I'm trying to planish this out, I'm gonna also try to just evenly hammer my entire cylinder so I don't have any weird flat spots. And you can see how I've got some uh, like uneven edges right here. That's not the end of the world. After I do all my planishing and texturing, I'll just trim off that excess. Now, after all that hammering, I've planished my seam. So you can still tell where it is just from those uneven ends that I had pointed out before, but now it looks pretty nice and smooth. Um, you could probably notice too, after I had planished and textured my whole cylinder, I went back in with my uh, uh, plastic mallet here 
to sort of even it out because I noticed that I got that flat spot like I was talking about. So if you need to, you can always switch back to your big mallet um, to even out those curves. And I just check constantly that the top and bottom look circular. So this is looking good. And now the next step is going to be to trim the top and the bottom and sand it down a bit so it's nice and even. So I'll show you that in the next video. And then finally, one thing I do want to point out is I'm going to use a dry Scotch-Brite pad, one that I only use for my pewter tools, and just wipe off the tools that I was working with. So that way, in case there's any sort of pewter residue or flakes on the steak, we clean it off. Same with our hammer right here. So that way, you know, if we're in class or something and other people go to use the steak, they don't get risk any contamination from the pewter. It's also good just to do in your own studio, even if you're not sharing the space with people. Always want to um, be proactive about avoiding contamination. So that's that, and I will see you in the next video.